There's a lot of BS and noise online telling you that everything is toxic. You're told to worry about every single exposure, like it's make or break. But when researchers tested human blood for PFAS forever chemicals, they found that just seven key types were doing nearly all the damage. Cutting exposure to just those seven could mean that you're already knocking out 98% of the risk for PFAS. I'm Dr. Yvonne Burkhardt, a PhD toxicologist and mom of two, and I've spent decades studying how everyday chemicals impact our health. In this video, I'll walk you through a simple science-backed blueprint to cut 80% of your home's toxic load without obsessing over every label or exposure. Let's start with the biggest mistake I see people making. Let's say you've swapped candles, changed your shampoo, or maybe bought a fancy air purifier, but you still feel like you're drowning in toxins. Why doesn't it feel like any of this is working? Chasing trendy swaps because they're marketed as clean, not because they're proven to lower exposure is one of the biggest problems. And a lot of the time, these greenwash products are distracting us from bigger, more dangerous culprits like PFAS in your mascara or phthalates in your food packaging. Here's a story about my own low tox journey. When I was dealing with health problems and finally connected the dots with environmental toxins, I went crazy throwing out everything that I thought could be adding to my load. Everything had to be clean, pure, and organic, or it was not allowed. I drove myself insane because of fear and lack of knowledge and ended up using a mud type of shampoo that left my hair extremely greasy and it smelled awful. I was so embarrassed to go to work with my hair like that, but I did because I thought that's what I needed to do. I focused on eating whole and processed foods that I cooked at home, drinking filtered water and cutting out perfume and scented candles that I was hooked on. I started to feel physically better, but mentally I was a hot mess. What I learned is that being a purist is not the way to go. And from that point on, I made sure not to try to be perfect or look at things in a black and white way or agonize over every single ingredient. Instead, I take a balanced approach without fear, stress, or overwhelm. Since I've been doing this work, I've realized that there's one thing allowing the fear and noise to take over. Most people don't have a framework to prioritize what matters, so they try to fix everything at once. And that kind of overwhelm leads to burnout, or worse, giving up entirely. And I don't blame you for that. It's exhausting to constantly wonder if you're making the right choices, only to find out later it didn't move the needle anyway. So let's say instead of obsessing over 20 different shampoo options, you focused on something with a bigger impact, like swapping out your nonstick pans for stainless steel or filtering your water instead of drinking plastic bottled water. That one decision cuts out a major source of PFAS that affects your family every single day. So if you can't avoid everything, where should you focus? What does doing enough actually look like in the real world? Toxicology teaches us that dose, frequency, and route of exposure matter far more than isolated every now and again exposures. It's not about one scented candle at your friend's house or the plug-in air fresheners at your doctor's office. It's about the products that you're using day after day and year after year. The evidence shows that majority of your toxic load comes from a few high exposure sources, what you eat, breathe, drink, and put on your skin every single day. Trying to control everything is a fast track to burnout, especially when it includes school drop-offs, grocery runs, work meetings, traveling, keeping your house in order. But when you let go of perfectionism, something powerful happens. You make room for realistic, real life, long-term action. You're no longer derailed by the occasional slip up because you're building a system that works the vast majority of the time. For example, let's say you install a water filter, you switch to fragrance-free detergent, and you move your food into glass containers. So when you're out and the only lunch option comes in plastic, you're not stressing out. You get to eat, enjoy, and move on and live knowing that your everyday routines are doing the heavy lifting. You only need to reduce the big exposures 80% of the time and give yourself grazed for the rest. I love Korean tofu soup, but I can never finish the whole thing and I end up taking home leftovers, which are always hot because it's served boiling in a stone pot. I usually bring glass containers for the leftovers, but once I forgot and had to bring hot soup home in a plastic container. While it's not ideal, I didn't freak out and I still ate it, knowing that there's probably microplastics and phthalates leaching. I just don't like to waste food. 
I didn't stress and made sure to have my glass containers in the car for next time and focused on doing better going forward. Let's take a look at exactly what some of those big exposures, which chemicals are actually worth focusing on first. When researchers analyzed blood samples, they found that just seven PFAS were responsible for nearly all of the contamination. And these are not exotic or rare chemicals. They're showing up in places that you'd never suspect, like water resistant clothing, takeout containers, and waterproof mascara and long wear makeup. Then we have phthalates, BPA, and synthetic fragrances. These compounds are common in personal care items, processed foods, vinyl shower curtains, and even receipt paper. So without a clear list, it's easy to waste energy on the low risk products while the high impact ones still slip through the cracks. Let's say you're deciding between buying organic clothes or taking a closer look at your toddler's plastic water bottle. One quick label check reveals that the bottle could contain BPA. Swapping it out for non-toxic stainless steel options makes a far bigger impact than the clothes ever will. And this topic comes up a lot. And I have to tell you, it illustrates this point perfectly. Understanding the exposures that matter is what makes the difference between being stressed out and overwhelmed about toxins or being calm and rational. So we talk about water filtering all the time on my channel and it's a must because there is really no other way around removing the contaminants besides filtering or purifying your water in some way. Many people are concerned about water filters that are made of plastic and I totally get it. I also don't like plastic. I try to avoid plastic as much as possible, but there are times when plastic is the better option. So let's say I'm choosing between two water filters. One is a stainless steel gravity filter and the other is a reverse osmosis that's made of plastic. The RO filter has been third party tested for the removal of the worst contaminants against NSF standards. The stainless steel one doesn't remove nearly as many contaminants and isn't standardized and to make it worse, some of them aren't even tested. The water that comes out of those isn't even tested to see what's actually being removed. So which one do I choose? I'm going with the plastic RO filter because what matters is the purity of the water that comes out of the filter, not what the filter is made out of. Yes, it would be great if RO filters came in stainless steel as well, but I keep my water in glass containers so it's never sitting in plastic. And if you're worried about leaching, I totally understand. Let me help explain. Leaching of microplastics and plasticizer chemicals is highly dependent on the temperature, duration of contact, and the fat content of a substance. So if you think about it, room temperature water that's being filtered through a plastic device isn't staying in contact for long periods, and it doesn't contain fat. So the risk of microplastic and plasticizer chemical leaching is negligible at best. Filter your water and immediately put it in glass. It's such a simple swap and it makes all the difference. Plus, like I said, the water that comes out of the plastic RO filter has been tested for microplastics, plasticizers, and many other contaminants like PFAS. So knowing what to avoid is half the battle. But how do you replace those exposures without turning your life upside down and living under a rock like I did? Here's a simple framework I teach to cut 80% of your daily exposure. These are the key areas that cover the most consistent, high impact sources of toxin exposure in your home. We've been talking about it. Number one is water. Use a certified or a water filter that has been tested that you know what actually is being removed. Your family is drinking water all day, every day. Number two, air quality. Prioritize ventilation, getting fresh air and going fragrance free. Indoor air traps more toxins than outdoor air, especially if you're using scented products and you are not opening your windows. Number three, food. Minimize processed foods, which are usually packaged in plastic. Prioritize unprocessed whole foods. Food contact. Switch to glass or stainless steel, especially for foods that are hot or acidic. Plastic breaks down under these conditions and leaches microplastics and chemicals into your food. Next, daily skin products. Start with what's staying on your skin the longest, like lotion, deodorant, makeup, lip products. These have the highest potential for absorption because they're not being rinsed off. Cookware and cook surfaces. Avoid PFAS nonstick coated pans. That includes nonstick ceramic. These release toxins from the actual coatings and the nonstick ceramic still has not been exonerated in my opinion. There are too many unknowns and lack of data for me to be able to say that ceramic nonstick pans are safe. Replace each item as needed. Remember, slow is sustainable. Look for affordable swaps that last. 
avoid trendy products that need constant upkeep or replacing and focus on habits that you repeat. For example, if your baby has a bath every night, the product matters more than the guest soap that's under the sink. You could even set a simple reminder every Sunday to swap one high exposure item if that's something that you can do. But don't put pressure on yourself. Maybe it's the water bottle this week or your deodorant next week. Give yourself time and you will be amazed at what changes a year from now. Start with what you're using most often, replace it once and don't look back. Simple routines beat endless research, hands down. I've had students that were stuck in analysis paralysis, unable to choose a shampoo when they're out shopping and they would spend weeks to make a decision. Once you let go of trying to be perfect and just do better, your life will change. With so much alarmist content online, how do you stay motivated without spiraling into fear or guilt? It seems like everything is toxic and now you're scared to touch your couch. Fear-based alarmist content spikes anxiety and creates all or nothing reductionist thinking. But empowerment comes from understanding what actually matters. Low-tox living is not about achieving someone else's flawless, ideal, non-toxic home. It's about making informed choices that fit in your life. Strategy means you can protect your health without ditching your career, social life, or peace of mind. If you ever feel overwhelmed by it all, pause and make a simple checklist of your top five exposure sources. That one small shift can bring clarity so fast and that shift alone turns panic into progress. So now you know how to cut 80% of your daily toxin exposure with just a few smart swaps. What if one everyday habit is quietly flooding your body with billions of microplastic particles and you wouldn't even know it? Well, watch this next video to uncover three microwave mistakes that secretly release hidden toxins into your food and learn the simple fixes that make a huge difference. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.